Thinking aloud. Conversations on the leading edge of knowledge and discovery with psychologist Jeffrey Mishlove. In, in Homer, we have a, a different tradition where uh, Odysseus goes into an underground temple and uh, there he uh, meets the oracle who is able to communicate with the spirits of the dead. And, and in that Greek tradition, these are like shades. They're like pale reflections of what they once were when they were alive. And they're so desperate to talk to a living human being that they begin flooding through. And uh, Odysseus is no longer able to, I think he went there to commune with Achilles, but uh, was unable to because all the spirits come flooding through. Right. That's that's rather different than a uh, the mystery school tradition, would you say? Definitely. Um, and I think that there there certainly are uh, surviving what are called uh, necromanteons mm -hmm. um, that are cave -based. underground temples that were uh, designated places for communing with the spirits of. Uh, the departed. Right. Mm -hmm. And some of them were even said in myth mm -hmm. to be how, for example, Heracles descended to the underworld to bring Cerberus up. Mm -hmm. um, there, uh, so uh, in modern day Turkey along the Black Sea, there's a place called Heraclea Pontica um, where there's one of these necromanteons that's in a cave mm -hmm. and that's said to be uh, where that happened. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, you, you get a little bit of both. It, it may not just be a temple, it may also actually be a direct way there, but whether that's physical or strictly spiritual, mm -hmm. the effect is the same. Well, I guess we have to appreciate that the ancient cultures had a uh, much more well-integrated understanding of a, a vast range of spiritual and psychic uh, functions. Right. Including communion with the dead, but that the mystery traditions, as you're describing it, has a little bit more to do, not so much with reaching out to communicate with the departed, but uh, lifting oneself up into the realm of the gods. Yeah, in, in many respects, that's, that's essentially what some of the Orphic tablets end with is, and you yourself will become an immortal. Mm -hmm. Um, I suspect that that's probably what happened in the Eleusinian mysteries as well. And of course, in the Egyptian uh, afterlife texts, yeah. what ultimately happens is the deceased is identified usually with Osiris mm -hmm. and then gets to be in a special part of the afterlife. Well, and as I understand it, the um, earliest versions of the pyramid texts were probably written for the pharaoh, who was already regarded as a divine being. And so this is instructions for the divine being of the pharaoh how to claim his rightful place in right. the heaven of Osiris, the afterlife upon death. Right. That it was, even, even though the Pharaoh was a divine being, he was also human and needed this instruction. Right. And then perhaps over time, the, this cult be, began to be more inclusive of other uh, people of status beside just the Pharaoh. Right. And eventually very, very democratized mm -hmm. so that any individual could, could partake of it. Mm -hmm.